and we're back. You are chatting with John P. Today, we're going to be talking about the dirty truth behind watch service <laughs> and cleaning, right? Um, I guess I should, if it's dirty, I should probably talk about cleaning. But first, like and subscribe. Do all that stuff. Keep me uh, at the top of your inbox because you're certainly at the top of my inbox. And I really do put time into trying to deliver content and value to you because we help each other. It's the watch community. And that's what watch guys do. If you're not a watch guy yet, keep watching my stuff. Check out Federico Talks Watches in DelrayWatch.com and you'll soon be a watch guy because that's that's kind of how this hobby works. So let's talk about it. Watch service. Now, this video is stemmed based on a guy calling in recently. Now, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I have to talk about this just because this happens more than uh, more than it should. And so it's a little bit of a PSA, but don't take it the wrong way. Anybody watching this, <laughs> I'll try to stay as positive as possible with this. And, you know, he had an ETA based watch, you know, an ETA movement, a simple uh, time only ETA movement. And it basically wanted us to, to match a $200 service price. Now, I thought about this and I spoke with Hans and I'm like, Hans, how can someone offer a $200 service? It just doesn't make sense. And so we had a long, a long conversation about just exactly how long it takes him to, to service our watches. Now, I'll say that I am a bit biased, right? We have a service center. Hans is a magician. He does amazing things with these watches classically trained, Swiss trained, can handle tourbillons. He's designed movements for Vacheron, okay? Um, the guy really knows his stuff. And uh, of course I'm biased with this, but I'll, I'll say that uh, before we started servicing watches for Delray Watch, we just didn't want to. And it's because so many things go into it. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of precision that's involved and it's a lot of hand holding right there's a lot of communication back and forth between the customer and you and the watchmaker and it's a lot of work but what we noticed is in this scenario people are calling us and they're saying that they took their watches to some guy in the mall or to some guy downtown and a real a number was done on the watch and it doesn't work or now there's a there's something wrong with it or now there's dust in the case and so things like this happen when you kind of go off the beaten path and try to get the cheapest service and i was talking with by the way we're extremely competitive but i was talking with hans about this and just for this base at a movement you know time only at a movement he spends over six hours on this now i'll say that the manufacturers spend even a little bit more just because when you're a manufacturer, you really, really, really need to give it the ringer. And we do the same at DelrayWatch.com, but we've got one watchmaker, and he can really be efficient as possible. He's working on one watch. He's not working on a whole, you know, plate full, a whole desk full of watches. And here's what he does. And if you can tell me that this can be done, um, and anyone would be willing to do this who's trained for $200, I will give you $200. <laughs> Seriously. So... Here's what he does. He takes the watch. He puts it on his bench. First, he observes it. He, he, he sees how the watch looks. He makes notes. He marks down. He wants to make sure that the watch leaves better than it comes in. So he makes notes. He documents everything. He takes pictures. He also checks the performance of the watch before he takes it apart. He wants to make sure that there's no damage, there's no problem, and if anything is noticed prior to decasing, we want to make sure that we get on the horn with you and say, hey, we've noticed this on the case, we've noticed this, we've noticed that, has this watch taken a shock? Because the last thing anybody wants is to find out that there's been a problem with with that item. Maybe you just purchased it, or maybe it's been in your collection, or maybe there's a problem during shipping. So full inspection, pictures, documentation, out wazoo, seriously. And then from there, he opens the case back. Now, the case bags can have so many different wrenches that are needed to open it up. He has them all. You know, he can work on pretty much anything, and he does. He's been classically trained. This is what Hans, the you know, a professional watchmaker does. If they don't have the right case back tools, you'll see guys using knives and scissors and all crazy things downtown, and I've seen it happen. You can see these guys working, like, off to the side, trying to repair watches. They use things. They scratch your case back. Forget it. So once we open this up, Hans, the watchmaker, he opens this up. He starts going to town. He observes. He, he sees how everything is looking. He observes the moving parts. He looks at it before he starts taking it apart to make sure nothing jumps out. See if there's any pieces that have broken out. Um, usually you, he would find that in the performance prior to, de to opening up the case. But you never know. Sometimes there's a, a previous watchmaker left a screw dangling around. Things happen when watches get in the wrong hands. Um, hands that should not be touching them. So he, he goes in and he decases the movement. He takes the movement, 
outside of the case. There's usually some screws, sometimes some clips. It just depends on the watch. So he takes apart the watch and then he starts disassembling it for the actual servicing part. Now this is where I do not know how someone can do this in 45 minutes and $100 or $200. People get taken for this all the time, and I'm sorry if you got taken for this, but public service announcement. What these guys will do, and this is the step that differs from professional and not professional watchmaking. The guys that have like these kiosks, what they'll do is they'll like, spray some oil in there, they'll adjust it, they'll regulate it, they'll, they'll tighten the screws or they'll move the levers to try to get it keeping within a decent amount of seconds. They'll put some oil in there, um, they'll use a little air duster from like a computer keyboard, they'll move a little dust out, uh, they'll wipe off the watch a little bit, close it back up, and then they'll go to lunch and call you back in uh, you know a half hour, whatever it is, and you know, hopefully your, your watch is, is good for the next year maybe not who knows but they certainly didn't do you any service and so what happens is with real watchmaking the, the watchmaker takes apart the whole movement all of the screws everything for for a base movement um, and not a movement it's roughly six hours for something like a chronograph closer to eight and moving into something like an El Primero with 400 parts eh, closer to about a day and a half so he takes apart the whole thing that's how much time it takes he cleans it all out inspects everything, makes sure nothing has worn down, and nothing can be problematic in the foreseeable future, and this is something that only comes with professional experience. You need a watchmaker that's worked at the brands, can know what worn down parts look like. If, if you don't know what a worn down part looks like, it's like going to a doctor for your annual checkup, and he just doesn't know the warning signs of cancer. Like, anybody can say, oh, you don't have a cough? Okay. You don't have a... a you don't have a temperature, you don't have any problems, okay, uh, it's a clean bill of health, you're good, Mr. Jones, but it takes, you know, a doctor that's gone to med school to be able to say, I think there are some warning signs here, your blood counts, you know, wrong, this and that, and you only get that with experience, right, and so, <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take a genius to say, okay, there's no problems today, but it does take a genius to tell you that there will be problems tomorrow and this this is something professional watchmakers do and so they look for these things of course they clean it they put the oils in all the positions there are different types of oils that need to go into different places and you have to know the movements google oil patterns for movements on the internet you're probably not going to find anything because only watchmakers know this from experience it's kind of an inside thing and not everybody wants to be a watchmaker because believe it or not it is a bit stressful so um, you know, there there is risk involved, things do break, and when you're working on movements that are incredibly delicate, if you if a part gets broken, forget it. Sometimes like with with um, modules that have been added to movements, you just can't get the parts. And so it's 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 basically surgery. It really is short, sure, it's not life and death, but um, for sentimental watches and rare watches, it oftentimes can be. And so, you know, he goes through that process, oils it all up, puts it back together. Now I'm simplifying it at this point because I want to drive home a few more points for you and keep the video as brief as possible. And so he puts it all back together. Um, he put, puts the movement back together and then he adjusts it to all the positions. So depending on how your wrist is, it needs to keep good time. And so um, the actual time grapher will, will rotate and he'll adjust it in that way. There's usually a lever or a screw uh, most of the time and he can adjust the timekeeping to be within a certain reasonable spec of seconds. It's always within manufacturer specs. Sometimes vintage can be a little bit, all, bit off because a whole number of reasons which I've covered in other videos. But nonetheless, he does that and he observes the watch for at least one day, sometimes 48 hours, to make sure that the service took. Now, when we say a, a service took, it basically means that everything was cleaned perfectly, there was no parts that we missed that could have been a little bit wrong, and there was nothing wrong with anything else in the, in the watch. I mean, even sometimes the movement can rattle around depending on how the screws were and if parts were been replaced like a retainer clip, and these things all matter, and believe it or not, in this minute precision components like this, the littlest details do make a difference. And so he observe it, he observes the watch, puts it back together. We call you the customer, let you know that Hans has done a beautiful job once again with your watch, and then we send it off to you. And that whole process, just depending, just takes time. And so I really want to drive home the fact, guys, that even if you don't use us, even if you use the Rolex Service Center, I mean, of course, for a, a Daytona service, we're at about $450. Rolex is over $800. For Daytona, we're at about $700. And Rolex is at $1,200. So we can save you there. But if you don't want to use us, if you want to use Rolex, you want to use Breitling, you want to use Paddock, I can't blame you. Um, we'll save you, but I can't, I can't blame you, right? Like, it's it's your item. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, so at least use them. But please, please, please do not 
do not go to the kiosk at the mall. Do not go to the guy downtown that's on the side of the road. Make sure that your watchmaker has the proper training. Um, please avoid anything that... Um, basically, if you wouldn't go to the guy... At, if you put a lab coat on the guy and he called himself a doctor, would you go to him if you had any health problems? If that's not the case, then please try to find another watchmaker. I just made that up on the spot. It's kind of ridiculous, but now that I, I'm thinking about this in my head, it, it kind of makes sense, actually. I could see Hans being a doctor. Um, there's just a certain level of professionalism that comes with watchmaking, and you need to take it seriously, and you need to approach it the right way, and it's just the way that will keep your watch running perfectly into the future, and it's certainly the way that I now treat my personal watches and have been for um, the, the recent years. Before that, this is a little bit alienating, right? Watchmaking is foreign. Oftentimes, when you go to your mom and pop jewelry stores, they, they misrepresent the things. They don't know what goes into it. Or you go to these guys that have a big watchmaking sign on the side of the road, and it's maybe a, a guy that owns a pawn shop or something like that. And uh, I, I, I can't I can't stress this enough, but leave in the comments below any possible horror stories you've had with watchmaking. Also, if you have any questions, I'm going to try to get Hans to chime in in the comments below and answer it. He also does watch the videos, and he's in them sometime. He's going to be on a video within the next week or two as soon as we get him back in, but um, a very, very prestigious popular brand had actually just called him in to give a speaking engagement. Um, about one of the, I think one of the movements he's designed. So he is a little bit tied up at the moment. Otherwise, he'd be sitting right here. Hans, I know you're watching. He'd be sitting right here telling you all to take extra special care of your watches because he does and it's not his watch. So if he does, then you certainly should as well. Whether it's Delroy watch or a proper, um, or a, a brand proper, you know, Rolex, you know, please take care of it because we see the horror stories and it's always a difficult conversation. Anyway, guys, a little bit of a PSA. Wanted to help you out on this one. If you already knew these things, tell me in the comments below, I guess. But for those that didn't know about this, had to do it um, because we do get this call fairly often. Anyway, guys, I'll let you get on to your week. Have a great week. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.